I'd be home by nine Hell, I tell her that most of the time Whoa, whoa, baby, don't know on her too much Whoa, I'll tell her where, but I won't say why Oh, now, now I'm dancing, oh, I'm dancing I'm dancing with the devil Hello and welcome back to Otter Creek in Rio Grande. It's a stormy day here in Otter Creek. So if you hear some rumbling and bumbling in the background, don't be alarmed. It's not nuclear bombs or anything like that. It's just some thunder boomers. So in order to keep forward progress going on Silver Gulch, I need to build a bunch of scratch built structures. And I thought, you know, since I'm gonna be doing a lot of this with the two before technique, I would go ahead and dedicate one video just to kind of show exactly how I, I go about doing this. And I'll again point you towards Bill Shop. I, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And I'll drop a link again. This is not the first time I've, I've discussed this, but, uh, this is not my technique. I did not come up with this. I presume that this is something that, you know, they did way back in the day before you could buy a kit. You had to kind of think outside the box in and how to come up with structures. And if you had some woodworking skill and some woodworking tools, you could very easily come up with the dimensions of a, of a building and then paint it. So that's what I'm gonna do. And for me, you know, one of the reasons why I chose to do this was because whenever I was building the building, I ended up with a whole bunch of cut off ends of these two befores. And I thought, you know, what the heck am I gonna do with all these things? And I almost burnt them, but I've, I've run into Rob Bennett's railroad channel and, and saw Bill making use of, of chunks of wood. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna save all those and see if I can't try that. And so far it's worked well for me. The first step in the process is picking out, you know, wood that's gonna work. So here's an example of something that you probably don't want to use. You know, there's a big chunk missing here. You got large knot holes and the whole thing is just really rough. So that's not a good contender to make use of. Now there might be some piece of it that you can make use of, but you know, as a whole length, that doesn't work very well. Now, I'll say this, there's kind of a nominal building size that this works well for. And that's any one story building that's narrower than 30 feet. I think this is pretty easily done. If you get outside of those dimensions, then it gets a little trickier. And if you get to a really small building and you start working around saw blades and things, then it also gets a little tricky because you know, you're, you're risking injury on your saw blade, the smaller the piece of wood is you're working with. And it's raining. Now the first step for me in this is, is first figuring out what are the raw dimensions of the structures that you're wanting to build. And so I've got four here that I'm looking at constructing. And this one is the smallest and it should be pretty easily done. It is a two story building, but I don't think it's gonna to be too difficult getting the height I need out of it. Uh, this is the biggest and it's the tallest. And I'm not sure, but I, I don't think this is a good contender for this particular method. I'm just gonna have to have to see how it's gonna work out. But that one probably won't work. This one 
is pretty wide, but it's not too terribly tall. So the first thing I want to do is kind of figure out what boards can I use to come up with the largest dimension for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to kind of look at this building first with the raw material. Now an advantage of what we're doing here is if, if you get things set up right, you can get more than one building. We've got a knot hole there, so if I sandwich it in the middle, I shouldn't ever have to worry about that knot. It's coming up with, with the dimensions here that should work. So, you can see here, let me move the camera. Width-wise, this works well. You've got plenty of overhang. You'll be able to cut back anything you don't need there. The issue might be the height because we are right at the peak here. And if you end up cutting anything down or not getting your angles correct on your saw, you might wish you'd had a little more height. So three would work well for that. You can see width-wise we're good there, but we're way off on the height. But you might be able to add in something else after the fact, and then you've got plenty of height. So there's that, and then we've got this building which could actually work probably with just two. So if three is gonna work, you've got that, you've got that, and that one might just barely work. It would be close. Uh, we'll just have to see what the finished looks like. So without a doubt, you can get those two buildings out of that. And maybe, probably not the third. Uh, we might. So that's what I'm looking at. For sure, I can get these two buildings out of these three pieces of two before. Now, I think if I can get this building out of just two, because I've got several other smaller buildings that I also need to build besides these. These are kind of the biggest of what I have left that I might be able to get out of the two befores. So I'm thinking if I leave that out of the equation and just go with this building and that building and maybe that building, then I could get those three buildings out of these three two befores. The only real question is the height of that one, of course, I'm gonna have to add height for that one no matter what I do. An option is to put something in between here. Now, this would be way too much. Because the wider this gets or the taller it gets, the more difficult it becomes to work with on your table saw. So that's something you have to kind of keep in mind. That's, that's why I say there's a nominal uh, size of building that this works well for. I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with the three. And if I can get the bigger buildings out of it, then I think I will, and if I can't, I can't. It'll be what it'll be. 
So I think the next thing to do is just a little bit of work on the, the joiner planer to make these glue up well and then get them glued together. This is the joiner planer and I'm gonna take just enough off of these two befores that they'll glue up together. I don't wanna take a whole bunch off because I wanna wait until I'm ready to put the finishing touches on it before I, I take anything else off. So uh, just a note, you need to be safe when you're doing these kind of things. I'm not the guy to talk about safety. I'm sorry, I grew up in the 1970s. Uh, my seat belt was mom's arm and I tried to recreate everything Evil Knievel did with my bicycle. So be safe. And if you see me do something unsafe, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not the safety consultant. I'm a guy just making some wooden block buildings. Next step is to glue, and I'm using tight bond. Now it says uh, tight bond original, but this is actually tight bond two. I keep one of these bottles around and keep them by it by the gallon now. <clears throat> I just want to get good coverage everywhere. template for the butcher shop and probably another several smaller buildings in the future that I haven't conceived of yet. But the next thing I want to do is go ahead and run this through the joiner planer a couple times and try and get everything nice and smooth on all four sides. happy with how this has turned out and now I want to reassess the overall size and you can see width-wise I've got plenty of room for the butcher shop and I don't think that there's any issue with also width with the bakery the only issue is the height and you know I think that it, it, it wouldn't matter I think that you know the height of both of these buildings is really an unknown to me period but I think I want to go ahead and add three quarters of an inch. That will give me plenty 
of room for error for one thing. And it also, you know, if I get both of these buildings out of here, I'll have room for at least one other similar size building that's two story. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I think that would be prudent. The only thing that you get into is, is the height of this is gonna be higher than my table saw or my radial arm saw. So before I glue this on, I'm gonna check and make sure that I can use a miter saw on it because that's the only other option left to cut this down to size. attention back to this and get it prepped and ready for anything I might want to do with it. Straight off the joiner, we end up with a chunk of wood that is nice and square on uh, all four sides. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this will be. It's, uh, again, it's too short that way to be either of those two buildings. This way, it, uh, the size it is now, it could maybe work for that one and it would definitely work for this one. So, not entirely sure. You know, my thought on this, if you, if you look at it by slicing off multiple chunks this way, uh, I probably have a nice supply of smaller maintenance buildings you know, that I can get out of that chunk of wood and it's, it's ready to go. It's just gotta, gotta envision what it needs to be. So all in all, the step one, getting your, your raw chunk of wood squared up and the rough dimensions set up, uh, that's taken care of. And I don't know how, you know, the, the longest part about any of this, you know, that, I, that I've done up to this point is waiting for the glue to dry. If, uh, if you already have the chunk of wood set up, then you're talking about, you know, less than 10 cuts on a saw to get what you're looking for. And that's what I will demonstrate next, just as soon as my glue dries. We're gonna get the finished dimensions of the butcher building. And this building is a 20 by 40 building. That's what I want it to be, kind of regardless of this, it's a 20 by 40 building is what I'm wanting the end building to be. Now, keeping in mind that we're gonna scab on the skin, the front and the back and the sides with 
the Northeast scale lumber scribe siding or whatever I choose to use, uh, we're gonna be adding a 16th inch to both the front dimension and the back dimension. So whatever it is that I need to do, I need to subtract back a 16th of an inch if I want it to be, you know, perfect dimensions finished that I'm looking at, the 20 by 40. So whatever the actual dimensions are need to be less a 16th of an inch all the way around. I hope that makes sense. It probably didn't. Regardless, in this case, it really doesn't matter because I've got play both front, back, left and right. A 16th of an inch is not going to make or break this building at all. So I'm not overly concerned about that, but I am gonna try and, and see if I can't prove that I can get a 20 by 40 building, including the skin on the front, back and sides. So the first thing I wanna do when we start making these cuts is go ahead and check my blade for square. And it is square that way without a doubt. And also the up and down. And it doesn't get any better than that. So this should work quite well to get a nice square edge. So the first cut I'm gonna make is to get rid of this end and all of that that's corrupted. Okay, here is two pieces of the scribe siding, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show this, but that's a 16th of an inch, which equates to one scale foot in HO. So I'm gonna work with the, the scale measurements rather than the actual you know, standard measurements that if you're a woodworker, that's probably what you'd feel more comfortable with. So all the dimensions around the block of wood are going to be one scale foot smaller than what I want the finished block to be. So we're looking at 19 by 39 is what I want the finished block to be. Next cut is going to be the finished width, which we've decided needs to be 19 scale feet. So here's the issue, is that our current height is taller than our blade. So we're going to have to do what I call a flip cut, and that's Cut it more than halfway, flip it over, and cut it again so that you're, you're getting the full cut that you need. And if your blade is nice and straight, perpendicular, square, uh, and you've got a good sharp blade, just some light sanding is all you should have to do on the other side. Uh, but you're going to have to make sure everything's square. I'm probably going to leave it just a skosh wider than the 19 feet, like maybe by a 32nd. Uh, that way, if I need to put it on the joiner for one pass to get my 19 feet, then I can do that. And I've marked on the block of wood where greater than halfway is on the wood. So I'm gonna lower my blade to where it's just a little bit higher than halfway through the wood. The 
see I've got just a little bit of delamination there. So I'm gonna run this on the joiner just to clean that up and it should work. All right, you can see, turned out just pretty darn good. Let's check our measurements, if I can do this. We are right at 19 feet. And I'm trying to do this through the camera, so it's a little difficult. We are right at 20 feet, give or take. All right, <clears throat> that works. So now the next step is to get the pitch of the roof. We're gonna leave, we're gonna leave it long, we're gonna leave it high and then cut away what we don't need after we get the pitch of our roof. So I'm not sure what the pitch is. Something tells me it's between 30 and 35, I don't remember. I'm trying to figure out what the pitch of the roof is. And, you know, for the life of me, I can't remember how or why I decided what I decided on this. Uh, it's real close to 30. It, it might be 27, maybe. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, all I care about is, is that it's a decent looking pitch on a roof. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with 30, a 30 degree pitch on the roof. That should be close enough for the finished product. I'm ready to start cutting the degree angle on the roof. And I'm gonna take a series of cuts to keep as much <clears throat> height of the building as I can initially, just to make sure that I don't accidentally cut away too much all at once. So what I've done is I've gone in and measured 20 feet. It's kind of hard to see, but right here, I've measured 20 feet. That's the side of the building up to where the pitch of the roof begins. So I don't want to accidentally, you know, cut off anything lower than this line. So the way that works is I've got my 30 degree angle right there and I will just keep inching the fence this way, taking off a little bit at a time until I get the peak the way I want. feet to the eave, which is what I wanted. Pretty darn close. Now, I took way more passes than I needed to. I did that for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is I had a little bit of a chunk out of here from the joiner. I was able to get rid of that, and I didn't want to cut away too much all at once and find out that I didn't have enough height. So I just crept the fence forward a quarter inch every time till it got close. And then I started creeping it forward an eighth of an inch. I could have easily probably cut away, you know, a half of an inch or a three quarter of an inch to begin with and reduce my number of passes to, you know, four or six pretty easily. Uh, but that's, that's how that is accomplished. Now, just out of curiosity to see how it equates to the mock-up. And you can see we're pretty close. 
Uh, the pitch does look a little bit different, but it is not going to matter at all in the end building. So this particular building is not going to get a recessed storefront. So it's literally ready to begin putting the uh, northeast scale lumber siding on. It's, it's ready to go. I'm gonna try and finish up with some final commentary here and stray a little bit off of the original intent of the video. Uh, you know, the, the butcher shop is ready to go. All I have to do is put the siding on, figure out the windows and the doors in the front, and then there will be some type of awning. That's all there is left to do. And I think the proportions of that building are pretty accurate at least to what I want it to be. Now, off camera, I went ahead and brought the, the bakery down to the sizes that it needs to be length and width wise. And I have never really liked the overall proportions of this building, something kind of seems off to me about it. So, you know, I've slowed down and part of scratch building, especially if you're trying to recreate something, is making some determinations about what it is you're, you're actually trying to recreate. And this is a pretty good picture. And what I've decided is that the side walls of my original mock-up, they're, they're probably off by possibly as much as 10 feet. I think they're too low. And so what I've, I've done, you know, I've, I've taken multiple different measurements and tried to figure out, you know, what is what in here. And I finally decided that this window or French doors, whatever, you want to call them. I believe that these are eight feet. And, you know, I'm determining that by this window size right here against this window size. So this window size is, is two feet wide. And the other thing I think that, that kind of clinches it for me, if this is a two by 12, if that's one foot, I've measured and that makes this distance from here to there two feet. So I can transfer that measurement. Now you are moving closer to you, so it's gonna be skewed a little bit but I believe that we're somewhere between 20 and 25 feet here, which again, if these are accurate, and this is I think 11 and a half feet from here to there, so 11 and a half feet, if that's also true in this picture, you know, from here, to there, to the bottom of this awning would be 12 feet. And that puts your second floor right here somewhere. So all that's to be said <laughs> is that I'm reevaluating a little bit. I'm not reevaluating the width. The width is the one thing that's, that's a little critical as far as the layout goes, is I want it to, to fit in the same footprint. But I'm gonna try and get it just a little bit closer to the dimensions of the real thing. I had originally planned on going ahead and notching out where the cassette's gonna go in because I, I thought I knew how deep that's gonna be, but I really don't because these have to be in at an angle. And ultimately, I want two scale feet on either side of these windows, which should match 
this pretty close. It might not be perfect, but it, but it should be close. And so therefore, I don't really know how far inset the doorway is going to be. So I'm not going to do that. And that's kind of what, what my tangent was here at the end is I was going to actually create this cut and do it for you and show you how I do it. Uh, but I, I'm not ready to build this building. I'm going to build the butcher shop first and then come back to this one. So... Look for a future video on the Cracker Bakery, you know, because look, we got we got Mr. and Mrs. Cracker, and then I, I guess this is Junior Cracker here. I don't know what they're up to, but there might be some nefarious things going on here in the Cracker Bakery. I'm not sure. Every place has a story. Is this a hearse? Are they picking up a dead body inside the Cracker Bakery? I don't know. So <laughs> the last thing I'm going to leave you with is just a, just a brief description of how I would go ahead and notch that out for those of you who, you know, don't already know. The first option to do this is with the table saw, and it's probably the most applicable to most people out there because a lot of people will have a table saw and that's about it uh, and maybe a miter saw but you can't you can't really do this with a miter saw unless it's a sliding and you can set the depth i don't know if those exist or not but you know you would set the top of your blade at the height you want you know so in my case that would be about 12 scale feet and you just run this back and forth and scoot your block forward a little bit each time until you have the inset depth. Now, I'll say this, I would not do that in this case with this block because there's really not a lot to grab a hold of. If I knew exactly what the dimensions needed to be ahead of time, I would have left this together and you would have a lot more to grab hold of to work with as you come back. I would start on the inside, get your first depth cut, and then work backwards a little bit until you've completely notched everything out. That's option one. Option two, which is probably the option that I will use is with the radiolar saw. And provided that I can get enough height out of it, and then you do the same thing where you're just getting your first cut and then inching it back and forth until you've chipped away everything that you don't need. And I do have a dado blade set, which I probably will use when I do this just to see if I get a better result than the last one. Now, there is a third option. The third option is a bandsaw. And this, this is a little more tricky. So the way I would approach this if I were to do it is you'd have to set up some kind of fence and then clamp it at the right distance so that you could slide this forward and make your first cut there. Then you'd flip your work this way and then realign your fence to whatever it needed to be and then do your next cut this way. So that you're, you're just two cuts and you've got your notch out of there. Uh, viable, I don't think I'll do it that way though. Well, I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, the idea is to turn something like this into something like this, and then into something like this.
that's the end goal. So thanks for watching. And if you're one of those people that uh, skipped the intro and didn't hear what I said originally, the, I don't claim this as any technique that I came up with. Uh, go check out Rob Bennett's channel and I will provide a link somewhere down here so that you can go watch Bill do this. And again, we'll see you next time on Otter Creek and Rio Grande. Oh, more me a whiskey, old barkey.